Hello there, everypony, and welcome to episode five of the Brony Book Club. This week we have on Coffee Grunt, author of Allegreza, and the and the theme this week is shipping or romance, whatever, depending on which site you're on. The tag changes names. <laughs> uh, with us this week is Sam. Oh, this is where I come in. Awesome. Yeah, this is where you come in. Yeah, Sam, the co-host. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we have, our, again, our guest, Coffee Grunt. Hello. So, we're going to start off with the usual, uh, Coffee Grunt asking the, uh, answering the questions. So, first off, uh, what tag will you see on a fanfic that pretty much guarantees you're going to read it? Um, I don't really read much fanfic now. I used to read a lot more back when I started writing. Uh, mainly comedy, comedy shipping that, uh, like a romantic comedy sort of thing, they're very fun to read normally. Um, a couple of grim dark fix, but I didn't really keep up with them. I didn't really like them. It may, mainly shipping and comedy, though, which is why I ended up writing that. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, what tag will you see that'll pretty much guarantee you won't read it? What are your least favorite tags? I don't really... Ha- oh, wait, long thic. I don't have the attention span to read anything too long, like uh, a, a Dangerous Business. That that thic kind of passed me by, uh, because everyone told me that each each chapter was like reading The Lord of the Rings all at once. <laughs> uh, there was also um, Follow a Question, which I got four chapters into, got bored, and just decided to go back to the shipping. Um, no, like offense to the writer but the uh, it was like wading through treacle trying to get through the story and it 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 moved quite slowly i felt it sort of felt like it was trying to draw itself out well it definitely makes sense i understand that uh, i kind of yeah. had that kind of thing happen when i tried reading um antipodes which i'm going for next week's show i'm definitely going to read the whole thing but or at least read up to a point. But that is that is something like that where it's so it's very long and slow, and I'm like, oh yeah. I, I what get, you, sorry, what? No, no, you go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, I, I get that with Fallout Equestria too. I'm actually currently reading that one still, and it's insane. I think it was mentioned on last week's show actually that it's longer than War and Peace. It's an insanely long thing. So yeah, that certainly makes sense. <laughs> yep. Uh, next question: How did you get the idea for Allegreza? <laughs> um, the, the, a, a lot of people have asked me that, and a lot of people assume that there must be some long and scientific, artistic reason for its existence. No. <laughs> when, in, well, I, I don't know what a lot of people expect, but to be honest, I, I literally just got bored one day and wanted to try a different writing style. So I did a little short piece where Octavia's at a concert, which then became the intro chapter, and. Um, just added to it my deviant art, released little snippets of it, decided to put it on Equestria Daily. And then it snowballed from there and gained popularity and I just sort of went all piece by piece made a story out of it. Which is why sometimes you can tell and I'd I'd love to go back and rewrite it but at the same time I just want to leave it as it is. But you can tell reading through it sometimes where the pacing is so varied and it's a bit all over the place, the story, you can tell that it was just done chapter by chapter rather than an overarching plan. Yeah, yeah that's definitely true. Yeah. What's your favorite aspect of uh, your own story, Allegreza? Uh, uh, I'm a modest person, so... <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, I, I didn't like admitting that it was good up until the point where about 900 people are now in my DeviantArt saying it is amazing. I've sort of turned on, yeah, it's not bad, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I, I really loved writing the characters. The characters were really fun to write because it was just great to make them bounce off each other and then have like banter moments for, for comedy value and then cute little moments and then stuff like that. The characters were probably the most fun part because... They're they're too easy characters to write. You just sort of make a stuffy one, and then a one that really doesn't care, and it's easy to bounce stuff between them and make it funny. Yeah, I I could I definitely could see that. Uh, writing characters is always fun. Yeah, that was actually my, uh, the most enjoyable part of the story for me as well. I thought the characters were done very well, and their interaction was great. 
Yeah, good job on that. <laughs> Uh, what advice do you have for any pony listening who really wants to write fan fiction but isn't really sure how they're going to start? A, a problem a lot of people seem to have is they want to write fan fiction, so they decide to write something along the lines of Follow Equestria. <laughs> so they start they, they start with this plan to make a very big fic with a very epic setting, massive wars, lots of characters brutal things happening and lots of characters dying and the problem is that it gets too big and they're trying to handle too much and it falls apart and then they, they, they struggle, they start creating characters and killing them to try and create drama whereas the, the, the reader really hasn't had a chance to care yet. And a lot yeah. of people just jump just jump straight into Grimdark because they think Grimdark shock value will guarantee it'll be a good fic when normally it doesn't. <laughs> Not at all. No. So, um, I mean, starting simple with just... I mean, the what a lot of bronies seem to really like is just simple little fix of character interaction, where it's just... You know, I don't, I don't know... Um, but an example I gave before was, uh, like, Big Mac and Brayburn are on a train to Appaloosa and it breaks down, so they have to go on an adventure through the Appaloosa and Badlands to get to Appaloosa. Yeah. So uh, huh. then the misadventures ensue, and you can create a little sort of bromance comedy out of that. <laughs> and, you know, that that would probably be quite enjoyable if done right. But again, a lot of people just go, well, oh yeah, let's just have Tyrant Celestia appear halfway through in a new Lunar Republic oh. and wars. <laughs> and the, yes. the, the thing... I, I never felt that Tyrant Celestia made any sense. <laughs> Me either. I've never yeah. understood Tyrant Celestia. I can kind of understand Trollestia. But, like, even then, that's a really... It's, like, a stretched characterization yeah. for me. And then Molesty, I'm just like, I have no idea where the hell that is. <laughs> I mean... There's a good Tumblr really of it. I love, I love the Molestia Tumblr, but other than that, it does make sense. I only character. see it. I only see that one when other ass Tumblrs uh, cross over with it. In which, like, the one with uh, Discorded Hooves. That one was hilarious. <laughs> um... Who are your favorite professional authors, and do you think they affected your writing? And if so, what way? Well, Douglas Adams is one, and yes, he really, <laughs> really did affect the writing. Um, there are some parts where I just sort of decided to do a little inspired by him parts. So generally, the f I tried to go for a slight feel of his writing style, because the way he wrote Hitchhiker's Guide and Dirk Gently is... It's a really weird style to explain. It's not like he's just sitting at a pub with you having a pint and he's casually telling you the story over a drink. <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely... It's, I was, yeah, uh, Dirk Gently is definitely like that. I think uh, more than Hitchhiker's Guide almost. Like It does seem like the story is just told in this completely odd way. It just jumps back and forth between one thing to the next and it, you're like, what the hell is it? Have to, oh, whatever, you're drunk. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just a nice way of doing it because it feels very casual. It feels like he's talking to you directly. And yeah. it's got the little funny side moments like where he'll be describing a character event and he'll say, oh, he'll talk about his planet and then he'll talk about how this planet is home to the only... Uh, by the way, do you know this planet is the only place where the uh, inhabitants have 42 arms and therefore invented the aerosol deodorant before the wheel? <laughs> and little silly aside moments like that. <laughs> And the, the, uh, just the way he describes stuff, it's not really poetic, it's just done in a really weird sort of comical way. Yeah, yeah I, I do love uh, Douglas Adams. He's he's a fantastic author. Or was, you know, you know mm. rest in peace. Um, yeah. So I guess next we discuss uh, shipping, you know, the week's theme. The... One of the largest topics for almost any fandom. Uh, ours is no exception. You know, shipping is one of the biggest tags. Yeah. Uh, it gets a ton of stuff, and I don't really know. I think it's a hard thing to talk about because there are all these kind of what's the word for it? There's so much like. We're a kind of fandom because we have this main, uh, the system of main characters that we do. There's like this wheel, like there's charts for it of how uh, shipping with the, the shipping between them, uh, with <laughs> Rainbow Dash being the bicycle. Oh gosh! And then yes. there, uh, and then we have all y'all. We make these relationships with all these other characters, uh, whether it be Doctor Hooves and Derpy, 
or of course, with you, Vinyl and Octavia, or Lyra and Bon Bon, and we make all these other little ones, and I find it just interesting how much we seem to, more than other fandoms, we really do just enjoy the character interaction, I think, with the shipping. I think that's like, like it's it's like, yeah, we're there in a relationship, but let's focus on them like having, like, let's do it, doing something fun, you know, let's, 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 let's see what happens when you put them in a room and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, Sam, how do you feel about shipping? Well, it's I, I think that I actually, if I remember right, in the first episode that I was here, said that it was one of the tags I usually avoided. <laughs> I mean, it issued not necessarily being that. I'm certainly not against the idea of exploring potential romantic relationships and characters. It's just that of the fan fiction genres that I've generally found to just often not be all that good. I think I've probably had the worst experiences with shipping. <laughs> I mean, so much of it just seems to be, I mean, like you certainly have your ones that are thought out. I'm certainly not saying that none of them can be good. This one was fantastic, but I've noticed a lot of them. And honestly, looking through trying to find more to read in preparation for this episode didn't really help much. A lot of them seem to just be, you know, people think, oh, these two would be cute together. Let's just, you know, like, that's all they got. They don't really have any interesting character interaction or anything like that. They just decide they like the idea of the two characters and run with it. And oftentimes, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you have to have a certain concept of chemistry and how to write the interaction between characters to actually really make it work. So, you know, the fanfics that you guys talk about on shipping, I'll definitely be taking in mind and uh, reading after this to see if I can't find some that break that tendency that I've seen. Okay. Uh, Coffee Grant, what do you have to say on this topic? Well, uh, on, on the note of shipping quality, um, if, if you go through DeviantArt, at least if you go through Equestria oh, Daily, yeah. if you go through Equestria Daily, you've got a filter of the, the pre-readers where there's a certain bar that's been set. It seems quite arbitrary sometimes. You get some junk mm. come through, then you can get a perfectly good fix that someone submits, and then it gets rebuffed. Um, if you go through DeviantArt, you can find some really weird little corner of the corners of the world, and there's an okay. awful lot of people there where uh, they'll take two obscure characters, two completely incompatible characters, and try and ship them so hard. They, they'll <laughs> release thick after thick after thick because they believe, oh, I'm the only person that's done this um, pairing. Therefore, all I have to do is write fan fiction until they become popular, and then I'll become popular off the back of that. <laughs> Foamy mouth guy and Katara. Oh gosh, oh, poor Katara. She got paired with everyone. <laughs> so, no, Zuko, but it's from Avatar: The Last Airbender. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was nuts. <laughs> God, the shipping in that fandom is insane. Yeah, that that got crazy. <laughs> the <Zutorian! laughs> Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I have a bad cough. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, um, I I don't like turning around and saying that I'm a great example of doing it because obviously there's areas I can improve. One person who I would say can do the interactions a little bit more fluidly than me is an author called Avery Strange. It's just they're a little bit more organic, and it's quite fun to try and ca play catch up with her, and you know, just just try and work out what she's doing that I'm not and why they just feel more fluid when she writes compared to how I do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a, a lot of the time it is, I mean, she can take a, a ship like Fluttershy and Trixie, for example, and she did in a way where it, it made perfect sense. The character interactions made perfect sense. And you went, wow, why has no one else ever done that before? Huh. Why is it such an overlooked ship? It's called a kind, Kindness Reward, if you want to look it up. But it is literally one you, when, when you look at the premise of and you think, well, this is going to completely suck. And then you read <laughs> it and say, well, wow, that, that actually is really good. Huh. I, it's funny you mentioned, like, I had no idea that ship existed. I just finished this really long, I think it, just, it finally completed, there was an entire friendship fic between Fluttershy and uh, Trixie. And that was incredible, and I do want to talk about it on a later date, but I find out this is a ship between them. And actually, after that fic, I'm almost like, that could work. I could see that. I definitely want to check this out now. I'm gonna huh. off to the bookmarking. Yeah, I've bookmarked I mean, it too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, right, uh, the oh, sorry. No, no, you, the, you go ahead. 
the uh, the kindness reward it mainly relies on Trixie being a dominant personality, Fluttershy being submissive. So it works through that, and then they harmonize, and then they do other harmonic things. Uh, no, no, nothing dirty. The, the the thing is, and I found this from writing Allegreza, is that a lot of the time when I that, that people in the fandom, especially you come across in deviant art, the word club comes up a lot. Yeah. Which is something, oh, yeah. Cool. yeah um, it, as a writer, there's nothing more annoying than when you do a scene where you think, or right, the characters are gonna do something like this. So you do a scene, you leave it off in the bed, you cut off when they go into the bedroom, then you restart the next day, and any other brain can tell what the characters have done, and yet you still get like a bunch of guys appear in the comments that she going, "Can we have?" A, a detailed analysis of what happened in that bedroom, like, no, you, no, you fucking can't. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, and uh, the, I, I basically ended up putting a rule out on my DeviantArt, if anyone asks for Klopp, I will block you, no exceptions, because <laughs> it really got my nerves. It's, I did end up writing a short piece where someone really dared me to do it, and then in the end, after about two paragraphs. I got to the point where Oct- Octavia stripped off her bow tie for comedy value and I thought, nah, I'm just gonna, I can't do this seriously. It just feels stupid. <laughs> so I, I, tur- I turned it into a comedy fic where uh, Octavia goes to lick Vinyl's horn, gets an electric shock and Vinyl ends up sleeping on the couch that night. <laughs> <laughs> I just... Well, just I, I just got, I just had fun with that because I put it out and pretended, oh, I've, I've caved everyone. I've written a clock fic. I feel terrible. Everyone wrote, like, wrote there. It, it's late. I can't talk properly. <laughs> everyone read it and assumed that, oh my god, no, I can't believe it's written this. I'm going to read it and see how bad it gets. And then halfway through, they have that moment where it just turns into a comedy, and it, it, it got a good few laughs. Yeah, that's quite a lot of shock sounds people. awesome. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I guess now we can uh, move on. We can uh, disc- discuss Allegreza, which uh, I didn't even realize because it um, the very first thing I read of the whole one of the very first fics I actually read was the script fic, uh, the Vinyl Scratch Tapes, which for the longest time set my bar for who Vinyl and who Octavia were. And then I kept hearing people mention this Allegreza as the other big one. I was like, oh, I guess I'm gonna have to read this too. And it, I was just surprised on how. How similar and how different? Like, I guess you, you could say your your vinyl is much less uh, Kamina esque. She's she's much more. Uh, she's a lot nicer. She's a lot less over the top in her uh, in her craziness. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, it is really. I guess yeah. Like we said earlier, the, the best thing about it has to be just the character interactions are really amazing. Uh, whether they be between Vinyl and Octavia, or those two and Lyra and Bonbon, bon, or you know, or the bartender. Oh my god, that bartender's hilarious. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, that was the thing with how Vinyl Scratch Tapes was written. It was It's written directly dialogue only, so it relies entirely on banter to survive, and it does it really well. I mean, I've, I actually um, helped Corey Williams pre-read a few of his later... F- chapters of it mainly um, I don't know if you've been keeping up with it but the uh, one where they, they do a U he did a U-turn on like Blue Blood's personality how it turns yeah. out a lot more sympathetic and it, uh, it was one um, that that I did turn around and say to him you know you're changing the entire tone of the fic it'll have success in some areas but you'll have people who won't like it in other areas so you've got to really try and Tight, tight rope walk this and make sure it's done okay and he he went through for it and apparently it turned out well he, he did alright oh, yeah. didn't it I, I'd definitely say it turned out well I mean um, as far as vinyl scratch tapes I, I went more for a really flowy halfway between Tolkien uh, uh, I, I don't know if you could say it's Tolkien but I tried to emulate little bits of Tolkien flowy ways and Douglas Adams and it's just just an amalgam of different things and um, so I had the descriptive style which a lot of people thought was great and it was an excuse for me to just throw bits of vocabulary and to try that and mine mine was deliberately a bit more British Um, (laughs) that's definitely true 
Yeah. My, my my vinyl was British. My Octavia was British, and that's that's how everyone's Octavia is British. But mine's just a sort of brand that I know people a little bit like that, and I know people a little bit like the vinyl I had in mind, who's less a, a sort of DJ rock star, more sort of dropout who did. DJing on the side to pay rent and barely gets enough money for that. So it's, I mean, I had, I had a little backstories for both of them, like how vi- vinyl um, used to be on a university course in advanced biology, got bored and became a DJ. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I really yeah. went from being more of a slob rather than a, a, a rock star in that case. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sam? anything well, about Allegracia certainly it's I, I mean I was I was surprised while reading it just because as I said I haven't been a huge fan of shipping so I'll readily admit that when Roy was all like oh yeah it's a shipping episode I'm like oh, oh, oh okay <laughs> but uh, you know I started reading it and as I mentioned briefly before the character interactions were the main things that stood out to me and then as it started to go on I was impressed at how I, I mean, the cute moments, you know, as it went on and they started having these, you know, these awkward moments that quickly turned into cute moments that, I mean, the development of the relationship and just the kind of the feelings of first love, if you will, were quite well captured, I thought. I mean, I was impressed as I was reading it. It it, it really seemed to capture those feelings when, you know, you, they're there, but you're not sure they're there and, you know. I thought I did a very good job with that. It was it was a rather well written story, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh oh. Do you have anything, Coffee? Oh I'm I'm flattered for one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that's another thing that people kept saying that they liked about the way it progressed because uh, the the pacing is I didn't have the same focus as a lot of people. The general formula for a shipping fix seems to be two characters meet and fall in love and admit it to each other within the first few chapters, <laughs> and then the rest of the fic is them going round to their friends and telling them how they're lesbians now and then. Oh, then you normally have a subplot where there's An oh my god, lesbians are bad. You should stop them. <laughs> and uh, that's 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 pretty much exactly how the rest of the story goes most of the time. Whereas yeah. I I sort of thought you know what I, I really don't feel that's necessary. I don't really want to write that in because yeah you know what what does that achieve other than just sitting there going oh well oh lesbians are bad no they're not lesbians are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean um. I just wanted to focus on just, you know, taking two characters and, you know, slowly moving them together. And that's what a lot of people seem to like about it. It was really fun to just slowly, you know, nudge them together over the course of several chapters until it's, what, chapter 9 on the Equestria Daily before they even have the first kiss. Which a lot, if if yeah. you have Dash in a story, the first kiss is down from the first paragraph. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I guess uh, we can move on. So uh, now we're going to talk about updates to things we're reading right now. And I, I don't know if it's for everyone here, but this week was kind of uh, dry. Or actually, actually, it's been, what, I think two weeks since the last episode, and still I'd say it's been dry for what I'm reading. Uh, the only thing that's actually updated that I'm reading literally is just one I just started reading recently um, of Challenges and Kisses by Raven's Dagger, which is – it's – it isn't really. I think it does. It might have the tag of shipping, but it, it's like it's um, Scootaloo. And it, well, what's his name? Um, I think it's Pipsqueak, or is it like? I think it's yeah. No, it's, it's either Featherweight or Pipsqueak. I can't remember. Uh, one of them is after uh, Scootaloo, but it's a completely comedy, you know, kind of thing where it isn't. It isn't taken at all seriously, really. It's you know just a child with a crush. Kind of thing, and it's really funny, which is funny because it you know fits the week's theme a little bit. But it's really good, and it actually updated. But everything else has just been dry. I don't know. Anything update for you, Sam? Uh, not really. I mean, I did finally get through a few fix that are currently ongoing. Um, I started the Conversion Bureau, still reading through that actually, and I tore through a world where that rainbows pretty quickly. The, 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 yeah, no, that that was very good. Um, 
I, mean, I also found one that I'm kind of sad doesn't seem... I, I was looking through shipping stuff and found one called How Every Ship Fic Would Actually Happen. <laughs> and it's it's a satire, basically, just taking each of the major ships and using a very short story to just display the reasons they totally wouldn't work. And it, it's actually very enjoyable, but it looks as though it was kind of all written over the course of May and doesn't look like it's going to be updated anymore, which makes me sad. But oh. yeah, and I, I finally started some of the ones that are still currently updating. I've been checking back on my little chrono quite often, and I'm sad to see that hasn't happened yet. But... Yeah, well, yeah. Hopefully, something will update soon that I'm free. That one, the nice. last one you update, uh, the last one you just mentioned, it reminds me something similar um, for the previously mentioned fandom of Avatar. There's a really funny similar one of uh, May comments on every ship. Oh god! And it's a really funny series because it's just her deadpan. Yeah, seriously. I'll link you later. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, coffee. You said earlier you're not really reading that much stuff. So, did anything update for you recently or? That you can remember? All my favorite authors seem to have fallen off the earth lately, um, which is something I've noticed. It's quite alarming how many people I used to follow or talk to directly about writing. I mean, I myself have sort of, you know, started to not... It's not that I'm getting bored of the fandom. It's just... it is Things like fix tend to be cyclic. And um, the thing is, you can almost see in a new episode... Like, uh, I don't know, Cranky Doodle Donkey and Matilda, you see, there's going to be a massive onslaught of shipping of these two now, and you can <laughs> te- you can tell when the, the, the tsunami's coming sometimes, when you see a moment in a fake, you go, all right, like, like the, the season two finale, you know, brace yourselves, there's going to be a heck of a lot of grimdark changeling fix coming in. <laughs> and, yeah. and non-grimdark ones as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It, there could be a cute little story about how a, a, a mare falls in love with a guy and the guy turns to be a changeling and then they, she decides to love him anyway because true love and stuff. That that would be a nice story. I don't know if anyone's done it. Someone should. But I mean, like, a lot a lot of my favourite offers, Esper Derek, Gravekeeper, Avery Strange, a, a lot of them just seem to have stopped writing. <laughs> oh, um, that's sad. I mean, Esper Derek wrote the Out in the Cold series, which is one of the first shipping fix I wrote, because at first, obviously, like everyone, I looked at shipping and went, ew, pony romance, that's kind of freaky. <laughs> yeah. And um, the, his his fic was... You, you can you can argue the um, how well he introduces Trixie and Twilight, and it's a Twixie fic, but... <gasps> no Twixie! I was joking. <laughs> from, from there... I have three fix that I like that are Twixie. Um, from there, from there, it, it develops really well and it builds its own little bubble of canon or fanon rather. And then it, it, it's it's quite a nice little thing because he kept that like, every few, couple of months he'd add another chapter, not chapter, and like a whole expansion story to it. And it was nice to have this little bubble of fanon and see it grow and get to you know the characters in it. Mm-hmm. Um, other people, the Gravekeeper was the writer of Ballad of Twilight Sparkle which is the big tr- Twixie fic. It's got Sophisto's badge all over it. It's like... Um, uh, I, he he was actually my benchmark to be. <laughs> um, I, when I first started the fandom, he was like the second one I ever read because I just had a Twixie stage. Um, his one was a lot less shipping, a lot more comedic, but in the end, you, <laughs> about halfway through, you realise that every pony is shit with another pony. Oh, God. So yeah. You have like Apple No Dash. one is single. You yeah. have Apple Dash, Twixie, a lot of the OCs and back characters are chipped <laughs> together. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so which, is there a com- what's the combined name for rarity in Applejack? Rarajack or Apple or uh, Apparity? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a hard one. Yeah. They, they don't really work together, do they? They hate each other too much. And you... Actually, I've read um, at least one, and I've heard of a couple others that are really good shipping between them. It, uh-huh. it, they actually surprisingly work perfectly. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, the, the uh, main thing is with Final Octavia is they hate each other. For, so they, they dislike each other, but they have the connecting core theme of music, whereas I don't really know how, if, if I could personally write those two because they don't have a connecting core theme that I could give them like a... a so you've basically done the next thing we're going to do. Uh, you've already done your suggestions for shipping fix. So oh, I have more, man. I I have so many. Oh God! 
<laughs> All right. How uh, about – let's do like a little order thing. Uh, you've done a couple. I'll do one. Sam will do one. You do one, and then I'll do uh, – you'll do a couple more, and then I'll do my last one. How's that? That works. All right. Uh, so I got – Similar to Allegreza, uh, Vinyl and Octavia University Days by Dawn Fade. Uh, that one is really good. It's still updating. It's pretty recent. Uh, I think you could make like a sliding scale of banter with uh, Vinyl and Octavia depending on which fic you're reading, where on like the far left side you have uh, the Vinyl Scratch tapes. In the middle you have Allegreza, and then on the far right you have this, where – there's almost no banter between them, really. Uh, they're okay. actually their their relationship is very different, and it's really good. Um, where basically like, Octavia really hasn't had like her mother's pretty much smothered her her entire life, so she hasn't actually had a friend before. And so vinyl, they initially hate each other, and they initially banter between each other. And the teacher for their psychology class forces them to go on excursions with each other to because he's like, oh, I can tell you two are gonna be good friends. And then they do, and they're like, let's just not tell them. Let's just keep screwing with them. <laughs> uh, and, it's, and it evolves into shipping from there, but it's really well done. I actually really enjoy it. Hmm. I have uh, heard I think, good uh, things about it. I've, I've, heard it mentioned, I've heard it mentioned down, um, now and then amongst people, and I have heard good things about it. I just haven't had the chance to read it myself. What's it called again? Uh, Vinyl and Octavia University Days. It's the uh, I yes, think that okay. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because someone on YouTube made a brilliant song. I think there's multiple songs on it. Uh, actually, it's really awesome. Hmm. Uh, so Sam, do you have anything you've read? Well, yeah, actually, I, I feel kind of bad because I know I already mentioned how every ship pick would actually happen, and the other one that I'm talking about here is also a bit of a satire. But still, I found it funny. Though I was I was looking around and I found apparently there is a. T- retelling of the Princess Bride with My Little Pony called Princess what? Pony Bride, but I can't yeah. find it anywhere. I cannot find it anywhere, and it depresses what? me so much because that would be amazing. Oh. <laughs> but um, I couldn't oh, find so. that. But anyway, I did find one called Shipping Goggles. It's it's a pretty short one, and it's basically about Rarity reading into everything too much. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, awesome. it, it's actually just a straight up parody of a lot of the ways that some fans go about the shipping and read into every little thing that ever happens between two characters. And so, you know, Rarity is just watching the interaction between Pinkie Pie and uh, and Rainbow Dash and getting all excited about stuff. And Twilight has to pull her aside and be all like, look, you've done this a ton of times. It's never ended well. You have to stop. And it, it, it's actually a rather entertaining piece. And it's pretty it's- short. It's funny you mentioned something like that. Uh, one of my favorite shows, Community, did it, something uh, like that, yeah. where uh, there was an, an episode where they they actually perfectly – they make their own version of an actual music video on YouTube uh, of trying to ship two characters together. Okay. And they like go, yeah, you could do the same thing with any two characters. Just play this certain you know romantic music and then slow motion have them look at each other with clips. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, that was a great show. I need to see more of that. Oh, that's great. Um, so, Coffee Grunt, what what uh, more do you have in your right, um, What's so I've, I've got a couple that come to mind. Then one is th- these are both pretty old ones. One is Get Along Home, which is a Derpy and Macintosh fic. Oh. It's, actu- it's actually done in a really good way. It's really cutely sort of done between Derpy and Macintosh. It's only a one chapter, fairly short fic, but it's a nice little one. It makes you feel happy and bubbly inside afterwards. Um, which it, it's, That's good for the romantic one. Another one more along the lines of satire is a really old one called The Elements of Awesomery. What? <laughs> which is uh, The Elements of Awesomery, which is a satire fic. It, it's deliberately written as like a really bad fanfic that is so <laughs> bad it is simply amazing. And it's got... Oh, I love it's those. Got, <laughs> um, it's it's got like um, shipping elements, uh, the, the, like some grim dark elements. It's like a, a retelling of the Battle of Nightmare Moon, and not not the Battle of Nightmare Moon, like the main six going and fighting against Nightmare Moon, but from a really retarded thing. Like, uh, for example, it, it has a lot of swearing in it. Hmm. Um, so those squeamish might not. But for example, Fluttershy is the element of Moa's fuck. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> <laughs> the um, 
There's, there's like little signs like uh, a, a, a Applejack, Applejack smoked a cigar then chomped it because she just didn't give a buck. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's an amazing thing to read. Just just because just uh, of how idiotically amazing it is. Um, no doubt. I feel like that's always funny. I just looked I, it up and it, it, even in the um, the little blurb that it says you know, on, uh, above it on film fiction, it actually makes a reference to uh, full life consequences, which is one of my personal favorites. So bad it's good fix. So I'm okay with that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I must do what has to be done and live up to my family <laughs> name and face full life consequences. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that one gets me every time. <laughs> uh, when it comes to bad fix, I think my favorite is still. I don't remember the name, but it's just the one that everyone remembers from. And then John was a zombie. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard of that one. one. I'm not sure what it is. Is that repercussions it's like a, it's a of evil? Fic. I think it's yeah, repercussion of evil, a doom thick. It is a. Lot. I will kill the demons. And, <laughs> no, John, you are the demons, and then John was the demon. <laughs> <laughs> it named a trope. It's awesome. <laughs> Man, okay. uh, I I really want to get back into writing, but at the same time, it takes a lot of effort to just think of ideas, and then I'll open up a a, a thick write a ch- write a paragraph and go, yeah. The, the the problem is I moved into game writing, mainly. I've, I've started a game project, so that's because yeah. we're going for a non-linear game. That's a lot more exciting to do because, like uh, Mass Effect sort of thing, where you can save or not save different characters and do different events, and it's really yeah. fun rather than just having a linear story where it's only told through text. Being able to, because I've got we're getting a small team now be able to tell a story and have it diverge in all sorts of different directions, think like or right, how does this event affect it, does this event affect this character in this way, so if this place gets destroyed, does that character then go off the rails or something like that, yeah. and it's really fun to have like a, a, a spider web coming out from the centre and have ideas for all these different endings so that's, that's sort of stolen my attention away from writing Pony because, yeah. well, it's, oh. it's a Pony game, but um, is is still in my attention away from writing, just shipping and the like. Huh. huh. Uh, then I got my last. Uh, my last one I got is the is a one shot. Though it, apparently there's a sequel of multi parts, which I features different characters. So I'm not sure if I'm going to read it. But the incredibly dense mind of Rainbow Dash by Chengar Kordath. I have no way how to pronounce that. Huh. Uh, which is weird because it's a one shot and it's called that. But then when you go to the actual chapter, it's like. Pinkie Pie used a 2x4. Uh, it was not very effective, yeah. is the name of the chapter. Uh, it's basically, it's the same, it's one of those, you know, while this was happening in the show, this was also happening. So when oh, Hearts and Hooves Day, when Hearts and Hooves Day was happening, the entire day Pinkie Pie was trying to get Rainbow Dash to, to spend the time with her, because Pinkie Pie likes her. And so, but Rainbow Dash, it's from her perspective her, the entire time. And she just could not get a fucking clue. <laughs> and she, uh, and it's really good because it goes into like her hating Hearts and Hooves Day so much because everyone wants time off from work. And then not only did the, that, but everyone wants these special qualifications with the weather. You want a rainbow just at this moment. You want to be cloudy oh, within gosh. the sky to open up. All these different things that she has to do all these favors for people. And she just can't stand it at all. And then, you know, all of a sudden, Pinkie Pie is like, oh, yeah, I could spend the day with her, kind of. That, that could be a little bit of fun. And it's really, and the whole time, uh, two background ponies who I don't see that much in anything, uh, Cloud Kicker and another uh, Pegasus I can't remember the name of right now. Mm. Uh, they also have a little subplot going. It's really good. It's really, it, for a one-shot, it's really good. I actually really enjoy that one. It's very adorable and funny. Hmm. Uh, and, and for the last thing, uh, there's non-pony fix that are shipping fix. So I'll let Sam start off. Yeah, I'll start off pretty. Yeah, I, I have generally not been reading too much into shipping in the first place. Had I before, it probably would have been Avatar The Last Airbender, and that would not have gone well, as we both know. Um, oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I don't really have anything to say on this one. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, do you got anything? Um, I gotta be honest. The only time I've even ventured near shipping is uh, <laughs> is Pony. Although occasionally I do get linked stuff like, uh, "Oh hey, look at this really bad Twilight fan fiction." What you mean, uh, New Moon? Oh. 
<laughs> oh god and then there's really bad Twilight fan fiction like the words really bad were necessary in that sentence I mean the, but, but the source material isn't amazing so you can't really have a good Twilight fan fiction I mean, the best one apparently that came out of it was Fifty Shades of Grey which from what I understand started life as a Twilight fan fiction and there's a really creepy book girls like yeah yeah uh, so I guess the ball's been thrown to me. I I have to. I've actually I read a lot of non phony fan fiction, but I don't read that much shipping. So this one is kind of like if you were to do a tag for everything that's in it, shipping would have to be one of them. But it's not really the focus. Is a uh, Joker's Wild by Jarek. It's a Teen Titans fic, and the premise is very simple. It's just hey, what if the uh, it was the Teen Titans cartoon, and then the Joker showed up. Oh boy. Mm. And it's. It's very dark. Uh, I wouldn't say it ever gets quite to grim dark, but it gets pretty freaking dark. Uh, it has good adventure, and part of the where the shipping comes in is Batman. Uh, before Joker left, uh, he sprung a bunch of people from Arkham Asylum. So Batman and company are way too busy to send help. So all they're able to send, they send Cassandra Kane Batgirl, one of my favorite comic book characters. Though she wasn't when I read this. Um, so she, you know, she becomes a titan at least, quote unquote, temporarily, uh, and she, she and Raven are are vying for Beast Boy, and it's really, it's actually one of my favorite examples of a love triangle because they, it isn't, rival, like it, it, they're not really rivals, like they're still friends, and they and they don't do that thing where they just begin to hate each other or anything like that, and it it's actually done in a really interesting way, and it seems more realistic than most love triangles and most stuff. So, hmm. it's uh, I, I, yeah, I guess I'd just say it's a really good story for a lot of reasons, and the shipping is probably one of them. Uh, the whoever wins, I will not say who wins this triangle, but whoever does the sequels of this fic, it's really great relationship, and it does really well. Hmm. Uh, it's still ongoing, and he barely update like he updates like maybe once a month, and I'm always like, God damn it, oh. why? But that pretty much wraps up our show. If anyone listening has any comments, questions, criticisms, wants to help, anything like that, <laughs> please send to the Brony Book Club at yahoo.com. There'll be a link. Uh, thank you for being on here this week. Uh, it's good talking with you, Coffee. Uh, thank you. You're very, <laughs> very interesting. Um, yeah. and uh, is that good interesting? Is that good interesting? Yes. Or <laughs> that interesting? Good interesting. Certainly. It's, it's, it's like vinyl interesting. It's very yes. <laughs> Uh, so thank you. Uh, thanks Sam for being on as usual. Yep. All right. No problem. So <laughs> see you all next week. Bye. Yep. Bye.